Ooh, what is up, you guys? And of course, welcome back to another Wi Fi battle. And of course, the Valor Pokemon League Season 7 versus the Bearded BHMs and Kalsker. And yeah, that was a long intro, wasn't it? Um, I'm not gonna do a team preview or anything like that. Unfortunately, time is kind of an essence, so I kind of want to go over what I fought and what the team I'm facing off against is gonna mean for the game itself. Now, my opponent here is bringing out the likes of Rebombi, Slow King, Hitmon Lee, Palace Sand, Kurem, and Neho Lego. His team, which didn't make it, there were threats I was considering to prep for was Hoopa, um, the um, Unconfined? Unbound? Yeah. <laughs> um, and then Tangrove and um, uh, Hedron, which were all threats towards me. But besides that, I think it brings the defensive core I was expecting him to, which is Slow King and, and Palace Sand. So overall, I feel this was a team I was expecting. I also expect Rebambi to be Stickwebs. Uh, I myself here is bringing a Solfest Vamoswine together with the likes of an Adamant Defoggy variant of Aerodactyl and a Solfest Glycopod and a Solfest Meloetta, a uh, Scarfed Infernape and a Tapu Coco with Expert Build. So overall I feel this game is going to go just really well here. My Cocos do, will do a lot of damage once Palisand is gone. Glycopod is very effective towards his team overall and Aerodactyl should be threatening enough. Um, so I felt my best lead was Mammoth Swine, I'm hoping he's going to lead off with either Rebombi or the Palisand. So with that said, let's go. So from the get-go here, we do get what I would say the ideal situation, which is the Rebombi. I'm predicting this to gonna go for, be, for course a sticky web, so I'm going to go directly for an Icicle Crash. It shouldn't been able to him down the, or force him down, fork him down the Sash, but the combination of Icicle Crash and Ice Shot should be enough to knock him out. He could possibly predict this going into his um, Slow King, but I don't deem that as a potential switch in as he sacks the, the Black Widow Pink and now comes Slow King. Um, I'll be honest, I was not a big fan of fending off against Slow King. No matter what set it is, it can always be threatening. So I'm gonna bring in my Assault Vest uh, Meloetta as my opponent actually gonna be a Life Orb variant of um, Slow King. So straight off the bat, I felt okay. This is not going to be annoying whatsoever at all, right? Uh, I'm going to go for a U-turn here as my opponent is going to go to damage the cure in black. I'm going to open the regular cure. Um, so we get momentum out of the way. Um, U-turn was only there for Hoopa anyway, so it made a lot of sense of actually bringing it as... I'm bringing in Glycopod, I'm going to go for the first impression. It's going to do around 50% on him and I'm going to be just fine. As um, I score a crit here, and it almost knocks him out, uh, which is great for us. But Draco will force us up because this is a Specs Draco, and uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're not like that. Now, Emerge Exit is good because it means I can bring Aerodactyl here safely, go for a de Defog, get rid of the webs, which are a really, really tough thing to be fending off against right now. As um, my opponent can switch out, it's going to go to Success, which is the Palo Sand, and um, yeah, the thing is here, Palo Sand is a threat, but it's... It's threatening depending on the matchup. Now, unfortunately, I don't care the likes of Honklaw, I have Aqua Tail, and I have Stone Edge to get with Defog and Roost. Uh, thinking about it, I should have been Honklaw over Roost at this game. I think that would have resolved a lot of things from this turn, actually. But unfortunately, we aren't. And uh, I'm going to send in my Goliath pod, and I'm going to go for Liquidation. I mean, that's the play. Liquidation will do around 80% on this. It doesn't matter if full defensive. Goliath pod is just that strong as my opponent goes to the Game Breaker. Uh, now, since I am a Salt Vest, I'm not scared. Even Psy Shock, I'm still gonna survive that. So I'm gonna go for a Leech Life here. My opponent predict that going back and forth with Rocky Helmet on his um, masterful monster that is the Palace Sand. And the Rocky Helmet will, of course, do more seal damage like Recover because this is resistant and a fully defensive Palace Sand is just what it is. I'm going to have him forced into Switch Out. I'm gonna go to Proxima and, um, well. He actually pulls a double on me, goes to damage. Though, I'm predicting him to go directly for Draco. So I'm feeling, alright, get the Coco out here. We need to get things done as Renatus is gonna come in. And um, luckily for me, um, Carl goes for um, uh, Draco. And we're gonna be able to knock this Pokemon out effortlessly. Um, now, I should say this. I consider U-turn. I should possibly have U-turn because I do know Tapu Coco do bait in... Of course, the Nihilego, which I can't knock out, and I don't know whether or not it's Scarves or if it's a Sea Monster, it doesn't matter, I can't predict right here, so I'm going to switch out to the Pokemon that matters the least for this matchup, which is actually Infernape. 
Uh, believe it or not, but this is a Pokemon that won't be able to do that much things. Uh, unfortunately here, I do a bit of a misplay. I should have gone directly for a Flare Blitz. Knowing Palisand was to switch in, Rocky Helm is going to switch, uh, knock me off no matter what. I go for a U-turn. Of course, Rocky Helm is enough to knock me out. I sh like I said, I should have gone for Flare Blitz. That would have resolved so many things. Unfortunately, I failed to do so. But I do bring in Proxima again. And uh, I can very, very safely here go for an Energy Ball as my opponent goes back to Poison. Now, if it is a timid C move set with Poison C, I can actually take this hit since I am a Salt Vest. I'm not scared for this matchup whatsoever. Um, I'm feeling very, very, very ballsy as my opponent here goes for what I was feeling was to play here, which is the Acid Down Pour on his Nessel Lego. I'm, 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 I'm struggling in saying that name. Uh, no, Continental Crush. My, my bad. Um, which, of course, based on the Power Gym. But like I said, um, I knew I was gonna throw a Sludge Wave, he get a max roll here with the, <laughs> the other move there, and Sunshock knocks him out, and I know at this point, I'm feeling good, I have the massive momentum, but things are about to change. Now I was feeling this was gonna be a Trick Room variant of um, Slow King, but I thought I had all the means to actually force this Pokemon out, and I failed to recognize, and I really should say this straight out of the bat, that Goliath is in range where it can survive the self rocket on the field. I really didn't think it was. So I brought Mamoswine with an Assault Vest variant uh, because it has a roughly 70% chance of surviving his skull. Um, going for a knockoff here was my play. Well, that's gonna knock us out, so that's unfortunate. And then I'm sending in Coco, which is 36 in special defense, which is basically a 50 50 to survive a potential Psy Shock or Scald. Um, and well, all things considered, I think this is a fair play to this point. Um, but he gets a good roll here and that's gonna knock out Renatus. So that means that... Um, well, now I'm switching in gears, Realizing, you know, I survived the Self Rocks. I... I might have cheated myself away from the victory here. Uh, I actually go for Liquidation here instead of First Impression for one reason, and that is that I really need residual damage on the Palisand for Aerodactyl to be able to win. And I'm saying that because there is really no chance of me winning this game at this point now. Um, and like I said before, um, I'm gonna be honest here, you say it, I'll lose this game, and I'll lose this game because of that very situation, and I really can't say more than I messed up badly. Um, as you guys will see here, I do miss the first Aqua Tail. Um, hindsight, it might potentially not matter. Um, the thing is here, I eventually score a very, very soon to be crit here. And had my opponent start attacking me instead of shoring up and doing what is the right play and actually get pretty darn fat, uh, I probably would have knocked him out. Considering the given situation, uh, he would not have recovered enough for the way that Shore Up actually doing damage, or the Aqua Tail does damage afterwards. I'm just gonna have that said, it doesn't necessarily matter, I don't believe Aerodactyl here uh, could have actually survived um, Hitmonlee and definitely not knock it out with Aqua Tail, I really wanna enforce that, that it potentially would just would have turned to a 1-0 instead of a 2-0 for him. But However, I do wanna kinda of just um, give my reasoning why I didn't give in Goliath apart, which would have actually allowed me to win the game. I really want to enforce this because realizing now watching the game, but also when I went to bed last night, I felt if I went to Glycopod, I would have gone for first impression. That would have knocked off Slowking. He most likely would have switched into his Palisan. Palisan would have got enough damage on him where my Mammoth Mine would have been able to come in since his Assault Vest could have gone for knockoff. His switching would have been either shore up with his Palisand uh, and potentially I would have stalled out um, Trick Room turns due to that, or switching his Slow King back again, trying to soak that hit, which he wouldn't have been able to do, or give it in to his Hitmolly, which would have knocked or lose the White Hub. And since the Trick Room was still active, I would have been faster in that situation. And even if that, if I, Mamoswine alone would have survived this turn because of the Force Switch that w it would be allowing. And from there on out, Coco wins. Coco can take an Earth Power from the range at. Um, it was, and can retaliate with a Grass Knot, um, and of course, um, it knocks out um, Hitmolee easily with hit Thunderbolt, and it knocks out Slow King with Thunderbolt. So I feel not only did I mess up, I actually effectively made myself lose because I didn't do the idle play that was on hand. I was not thinking right, and I'll lose because my opponent does something that is very, very well thought out, and... It was his last resort of making it, and I still had the means to stall and enforce that out. So, 
not only do I mess up, I think my opponent plays this game really, really well, but I had the game till that point, and I have no idea what happened to me. I messed up completely, and mess ups like that make sure that opponents like my opponent Carl here deserves to win. You should not be able to win if you mess up as badly as I did here. So yeah, with that said, I really just want to say thank you guys for watching. I hope you get some understanding of what I was thinking here. I'll definitely learn from this. I need, at times, really to keep tabs on my HP. Um, like I said, I didn't think all but would survive. And it doing so meant that, not like I said, I threw this game away. Because it went my way so far into the game, and then out of nowhere, I just choke. <laughs> and it's really, like I said, it has me frustrated and a bit bitter. Uh, but not towards Carl, I'm bitter at myself because I know I'm better than this and um, Versus a player like Carl you can't do stunts like that. It's gonna bite you back and it clearly did here Carl is not a player that Like I would say he's not that passive you know, like if you give him offensive momentum He's gonna use it and uh, he sure as hell did this time and while he gets a few two rolls in his favor it still is on that part that I had a safer play, but I did not do it. Um, it uses that simple. Uh, so, like I said, thank you for watching, guys, and I hope you enjoyed this game. And join us next week. We're going to face off against the three Murkros of Swedish Shaman, Hanapana, which was my Vifa battle the last day. It's going to be tough. It's going to be very gritty, and I'm ready. Because it's going to be my only loss this season. I promise you guys that. So, that's it. Thank you for watching. Take care. Bye.